what is the difference between a, a normal relationship, you know, a normal uh, exchange, perhaps between a husband and wife, uh, uh, parents and children, versus a feeding experience? What's the difference of those? What is it? What makes it feeding? Is what people are asking. What makes it feeding? That, that's a really good question. You're going to feel it. Uh, more than anything, you're going to feel if somebody's, you know, not not in your brain, but you know, in your in your heart, in your stomach, you're going to feel. Are, are they manipulating you? Are they making you feel guilty? Are they making you feel like you're not doing enough for them? Uh, do they do they tell you what you should or shouldn't do in your life, or are they free? Do do they accept you and love you for what you are? I mean that that to me is the epitome of a relationship. But if there's a lot of games going on, if they're if they're not trusting, if they're always putting things on you, if they're putting you down, or or always dumping their problems, or always telling you, you know, um, basically putting you in a place of taking responsibility for them, serving them, then there's probably feeding going on. And, you know, it happens all the time. I mean, it, it happens in all the relationships, but hopefully you'll start becoming more aware of this feeding that's taking place and, uh, and be able to put a stop to it. My husband's called me lazy for the entire 45 years of our marriage, but I'm just exhausted all the time, can barely do more than breathe. When he leaves the house, I feel wonderful and full of energy. That's the time I manage to do all the housework I can, but as soon as he walks in the door, I'm like a rag doll again. What can I do to change this? Yeah, and that's that's a perfect example of energy feeding. And I have to, I have to say that the person who wrote this... Wait, who's feeding? Well, the person who wrote it is allowing it to take place. And for a lot, a lot, a lot of years, you recognize the problem, and that's good. You recognize what's happening. But now, at this point, you have to say, no more. You don't have to say that to him. You don't have to say it to anybody else. Just say it to yourself. I make a clear choice. Nobody's going to feed off of me anymore. Now, at some psychic level, he's going to feel that it's going to go, that's going on, and he's not going to like it. But, first of all, it's important that you be happy, that you uh, really be in your own light. And then it's up to him. Does he want to keep playing the game or do, does he want to stop? Why do you keep putting up with it? You know, if if that's how you feel, what what is the relationship giving you? Well, is that a relationship? Well, it is, but is it a relationship that you want? What if you had a relationship, even if it was only with yourself? That was about love. That was about about honor and joy. Well, you have to ask yourself, why are you in a relationship where you feel that way? When, he, when he's there, you feel depleted and drained, and when he walks out the door, you're in your joy. Well, maybe maybe it's time that you took a look at how your own victimness is a type of feeding as well. So in other words... You're probably an abuser also. You may not see it right now, but part of you is probably feeding on him. I wonder if he walks out the door going, oh my gosh, I feel so much better when I walk out the door. So, you know, and we, again, we all do it. We, we're, all, we're all the victim. We're all the abuser. And the real key to this is the recognition that you have it within you, everything within you. You don't need to go outside to feed. You don't need to let anybody feed off of you anymore. You have everything you need within you. It'll change your relationships because you're no longer basing relationships, uh, no matter what they are, you're no longer basing them on this feeding, this cycle of feeding people taking from you, you taking from them. So you'll, you'll notice that, the first of all, your relationship starts to change. The people that you're not allowing to feed in you anymore, they're just going to go to someone else and start feeding off of someone else. The relationships that really uh, are, are meant to go to a higher level, in other words, uh, you can transcend the feeding process, you're going to discover there is an absolute beauty in those relationships that you might not have been noticing before. But that's just a, a little thing to say that you can make a conscious choice to stop the energy feeding 
my partner is often telling me how others are interested in him. <laughs> is jealousy related to the sexual energy virus? And what do I do with this kind of feeling? And what is the best way I can keep myself free of the SES virus and help my partner to understand it? He had a victim experience in a previous relationship. Mm. Interesting. Obviously, uh, a deep insecurity uh, that he's expressing and, and trying to draw you into all of this. Uh, you might want to tell him that uh, there is a man that's interested in you, uh, Saint Germain, and <laughs> <laughs> but understand, uh, it's just a deep insecurity, and he's basically asking for uh, for your. Uh, commitment uh, in, in doing it in, in an in a odd way, energy feeding way, but he's he's asking you to commit to him. Now you have to be careful not to get involved in this whole thing of his issues. But uh, the important thing I, I would suggest next time he says this to ask him why he's he's saying that, and then ask him three times because the first two he'll he'll lie about it, but. Uh, come to bring it to the core uh, in his own insecurities uh, about being victimized again. Uh, so he's doing it in a very SES way. Mm, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the question comes up: What about relationships? Ah, I got a tough relationship, and, and it doesn't work out, and it's karmic, and you know they're constantly feeding off my energy. So you take a deep breath. Okay, that's where you are. That's what you got yourself into. That's what you're experiencing. And then how about? I am here in my own relationship. I am in a relationship with myself. My consciousness is in a balanced, healthy, dynamic, loving relationship with myself. I am here. Yeah, I still got the part over here that's with that. A karmic relationship that's really tough and energy feeding. But when you get over here into the I, I, you put your consciousness into the relationship with you, what impact do you think it's going to have on this over here, that old bad relationship, that energy feeding relationship? What do you think is going to happen? Well, in the I am here with my, my relationship. You're suddenly going to say to yourself, "Why did I tolerate that for so long? Why did I let? Why did I create that for myself over there in bad relationship land? Why did I do that?" You suddenly start. Well, you have expanded presence when you're over here in bad relationship. And you're stuck, and you're trying to figure it all out, and you're going to counseling, and you're you're getting angel guide readings, and and they're telling you because you you abuse this person another lifetime, and now you owe it to, to it's your karma. You're only validating your limited, very tied up, very limited relationship. You're over here. Suddenly, you have expanded presence. Suddenly, you go, I don't need that anymore. I don't need it. I'm just going to walk out. Before you even have to walk out, things are changing over here with that bad relationship, without even having to work at it. Things are changing where maybe that bad relationship person walks out. Maybe suddenly they stop energy feeding. Who knows? But something starts to change over here, and you actually don't need to really do anything over here in your bad relationship consciousness, in the I am here in crap relationship, it starts changing itself. It is very, very natural to fall in love, and it's very, very natural then to move beyond that relationship. Very natural. And it's not something anybody should feel bad about, even a divorce, or it's just time to move on. It's time to let each other free and go, but so often humans don't. They feel that they're obligated because of what the children, uh, they have to stay together, or financial situation, or just appearances. We have to stay together. Or, as with many Chambra, 
uh, you don't leave because you don't want to be alone. So you stay in a relationship where it's known that your partner is an energy feeder. It's known that your partner is not being totally genuine and authentic with you. But you stay because you don't want to be alone. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And and I hear from so many of you when, when I'm chatting with you, particularly at l- late in the middle of the night, and I'll say, well, why don't you just leave? Well, I can't because, and then fill in the blanks, I can't because I don't have the resources, because this person needs me, because I don't want to upset the children. I say, fine, then stay, but, uh, but uh, you're only harming yourself. You're much better off with this other person being very clear with them and loving with them, very compassionate, and say, it's simply time to move on. They may not like it. They've gotten so attached to you, dependent on you, energy feeding from you, but the master moves on when they know it's time. Go your own way. It's going to happen sooner or later anyway, but do you want to come back four more lifetimes uh, to get to that point? You can leave somebody uh, in love. It doesn't have to be drama. It doesn't have to be angry. Uh, and what you're going through in your own mind, you're playing out the scenarios. What if you left? What about this? What about that? How are they going to feel? How am I going to feel? Stop that right now. If you're ready to leave, just leave. If you're ready to move on and do it honorably, do it in love. And it may not be the most pleasant thing, but it's not going to be nearly what your mind is making it out to be. You're not trapped. You're going to come back and thank me. Uh, you're going to you're going to tell me how great I am after you leave and respect yourself first. You're you're not really even giving anything back to this your partner anymore. And uh, in a sense, you're both feeding off of each other. It's a little bit ugly. Uh, leave, but with honor. And leaving could mean simply saying, "I'm ready to go." live in my own house by myself, just down the street. I'm not uh, running off with somebody else. I'm not going to the other side of the world. I just need that space. I need that time. And uh, there may be come a time where we'll, we'll get divorced or not. It doesn't really matter. But uh, there's so many ways to do it. But you've set it up in your mind like this is insurmountable and that they've got to die before th- something changes. Don't do that. Take a deep breath and allow yourself to love yourself. And then honor and respect yourself. Have dignity and have compassion for the others. If it's time to leave, it's time to leave. 